Hey, this is Drew Baird from Moon Audio, and welcome to Tech Tuesday's Thursday's Answers. So we brought up a bunch of different acronyms on uh, Tuesday uh, in the digital world, uh, acronyms that are used primarily with digital to analog conversion, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to go over some of those things today. We're not going to dive deep into the meanings of everything because there's so much to go over, but we're going to break down a few little things and, and, and I'm going to give you some opinions on some stuff. And we're going to talk a little bit about DAX and what they do. So we got three acronyms to talk about in, in today's video. PCM stands for Pulse Code Modulation. DSD stands for Delta Sigma Delta Modulation. MQA stands for Master, Master Quality Authenticated. So first of all, MQA is a version of PCM. Okay, let's, it's not a different digital file format. MQA is an unproven claim, and it's essentially designed by Meridian as an algorithm to help compress audio files to send over the internet at faster speeds and easier download times, etc. It requires you to have both a software package and a hardware package to do the unfolds, right? You'll have the software package that's going to do the first unfold uh, from 24 to 96 kilohertz. Then the, then the hardware package uh, goes from 24, uh, goes to 24, 192 unfolding. And you have to have a DAC that is MQA certified, essentially. If you do not have one, MQA will play at the lowest resolution when you send your digital file format, let's say from a computer to a digital to analog converter. I'm not completely sold on MQA yet. Um, you know, I've done some experimenting with Tidal versus Cobuzz. Cobuzz uses uncompressed file formats that they push out over the internet. I've never had any problem with download speeds. I think we're in a day and age now that download speeds really aren't an issue. And so I find that, uh, I find that MQA with Tidal doesn't sound as good as the same file at Cobuzz. Why is this? Honestly, I don't know because they're claiming to not only be able to do the same quality file format, but they're also talking about some enhancements in MQA files. There isn't enough digital information out there, and when I mean digital information, file recordings, and we're talking about MQA files that are stored on, let's say, a CD or a disk drive that's provided to you that's already in this uh, MQA format outside of what's going on with Tidal. There's not a lot of stuff that you can do comparisons with. So is Tidal the issue? Or is MQA the issue? It, the ruling's out on this, and, and I don't have a perfect answer for you. I can say that I do prefer Cobuzz better than Tidal MQA. Um, do I prefer streaming over stored music that I have here at Moon Audio on our servers? Um, in some cases, the stored music on my servers, regardless of resolution rates, sound better a lot of the time than streaming. Again, we can't compare apples and oranges very well because I'm pulling music a totally different way. So audio files can come in lossless, which is compression or stored audio without sound quality losses, okay? Lossy is some sort of compression. So PCM file formats come in a lot of flavors. There's, there's WAV, there's FLAC, like I said, there's MQA, um, and and each one of these have their pluses and minuses. Okay, a WAV file is essentially a perfect copy, and let's say if we're ripping CDs, it is a perfect copy of what's on that CD. None of the metadata is tagged to the files. So let's say I have ripped my music to WAV files, and I've put them on a server, and I want to transfer this music to a digital audio player, for example. Well, if I just transfer one file out of that folder, and I don't transfer all the context, including the album artwork, etc., when you go to view this on your digital audio player, all you're going to see is the file name. None of the other information is part of that. So in comes FLAC. So FLAC is a very small compression ratio of a PCM file. And now we're able to tag files with things like album artwork, etc. So now if you want to create this playlist from all these songs that you have on your server and put them on a digital audio player, you can just copy one song from an album. It'll bring over the album artwork and everything. Everything's sort of tied together. Okay, so with all these PCM files, we have what are called bitrate 
or bit depth value. Example 24 bit, a bit depth defines the number of digital levels that can be stored. Kilohertz means sample rate value. Example 96 kilohertz. Sample rate is a uh, number of samples per second measured in hertz. There are lots of different sample rates that file formats are recorded at and depending on um, the recording process really is going to at the end of the day come down to how well it's going to sound with the D to A converter. In other words, if I'm comparing 12496 from Cobuzz, like I was talking about earlier, to a 24696 uh, file in Title MQA, really at the end of the day, how that original file was recorded in its infancy, okay, at the studio, was it recorded to be an MQA file? Was it recorded to be a PCM file? That comes down if you're doing a conversion to the opposite or something. Let's say we're converting it to an MQA file, but the original one wasn't MQA. This can change how that file is going to sound in the end. Same thing when you're doing conversions from PCM to DSD. If the original file format, and this is before we get into DAX, but we've changed it. Let's say the recording company has changed a PCM file to DSD. Now they're selling all of these on HD tracks. Really, the original file in most cases, depending on how they did the conversions back at the studios to the other file format, really the original file format should sound the best most of the time. Um, so be careful when buying high-res files. You want to try and see if, and they do a lot of reviews about this in Stereophile and the music in the back of the magazine, you know, they'll tell, tell you about this album was originally recorded in this file format, but you can buy it in all these different file formats when you go to HD tracks. I always try to buy the original way it was recording because sometimes changing file formats can have a negative effect on the music. And lots of people are also doing these changes using their at-home software. Let's say they've got all of their files in, in WAVE, which is the highest for file format, if you take it down to a different file format like FLAC, you won't lose anything. But let's say you go down and you've converted everything to MP3s. Why? I don't know why. But let's say you want to now convert those MP3s back to WAVE. Well, you're trying to create something from nothing and you've lost a lot of the digital information. It doesn't work real well. Okay, so once we get into D to A conversion, uh, essentially what we're doing is we're converting a digital code samples to a voltage level so that the analog output stage can understand what to do. Because analog output stages don't understand digital. They need voltages, okay? Let's talk a little bit about DSD. So DSD is implemented and, um, from originally from SACD disks. Sony developed this and a perfect copy of a SACD file is called an SACD ISO file, okay? Now files that are now created from scratch in DSD, if you will, back at the recording studios, usually come in a file format of DSF, DFF files, which are called DSD files, essentially. DSD can be considered as a format that's superior in audio quality to PCM. But let's go back a second. When I get back to what I was talking about, how is the file originally recorded in the studio? If we're doing conversions, that statement may not always be true. And some DSD files in their resolution nature may equal PCM resolution files at 24192. And you can't really basically say one is necessarily better than the other because it comes down to a lot of things and especially what are going on in these two boxes, all right, these digital to analog converters. And some digital analog converters will do all of the DSD and PCM conversions in one chip. Like this TAC uses an AKM chip and it does both processing of DSD and PCM in that exact same chip. When we get to something like this big Bricosti animal, well now Bricosti has done, done it a little bit differently. They've got a dedicated Delta Sigma DAC, they've got a dedicated PCM DAC, and everything is separated. So it goes through a processor, it says, hey, is this PCM or DSD? If yes, go to this DAC chip. If no, go to this DAC chip, etc." And so DACs like this, where they separate out and do one specific digital file format, at the end of the day can do a much better job because they're focusing just on one file instead of having to do a conversion. And what happens in conversions? Sometimes things don't go right, okay? Not saying that the TAC can't do a proper job of converting DSD to PCM, but if we try and use the native resolution or file format in the circuit path 
from beginning to end, I think we're going to have less chance of er errors created by electrical circuits and all kinds of other things. Okay. So a couple of things to take away from here. All right. Most important part is how was the file format originally created at a studio? That at the end of the day is going to tell you how good a job all of these different digital to analog converters are going to do their job. Okay. If we use the original file format that it was recorded in, we're going to do a much better job than if we do conversions. Um, and, and, and that's another reason why I'm a little weary about things like MQA, because they're doing, they're creating a compression ratio to fold up this file, to send it over the internet. And I don't know what that's doing to the original music. I want the original music the way it was intended. That's why, for example, when I was talking about waves, when I record my, when I rip my CDs, I always do them in wave. I'm okay with the artwork not being tagged as a metadata file. That's okay because I want the exact representation of what that original file was on that medium. So hopefully I've answered a few of these acronym questions and gone into a little bit of information. Like I said, we could write a novel on all this information, but we're going to try and go over little bits and pieces each time we do a Tech Tuesday. So we'll get more into certain things like maybe next time we'll just focus on PCM. Another time maybe we'll just focus on DSD and so forth. And hopefully, you know, we can bring all this information together to make you more educated and understand all the stuff that's going on. This stuff is complicated. It's not simple. And it's only complicated if you want to learn the internal workings of what's going on in these products. In terms of just enjoying music, it's simple. Get a DAC, throw a file into it via some kind of digital input, and you're going to have the time of your life. So I'll see you next Tuesday. We'll come up with another topic all on digital audio for the next couple of weeks, and we'll help you understand what's going on with your DDA conversions and all your digital files and all that stuff. So see you next Tuesday. Make sure to subscribe and take care.